Hello all you Stars fans and welcome back to another league match here in our International Club Invitational Series. And this week sees the boys from St Andrews heading over to Cape Town to take on the Cape Cobras. Now it's a hard and dry wicket so conditions that we're not really used to playing on would be an interesting test for the St Andrews lads. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Well, Beautiful mountains in the background. Lovely setting for cricket here at Cape Town. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our coverage for a 20 over match between Cape Town Serpents and Universities. I'm Michael Slater, and with me in the commentary. Here we have the lineup for both teams, Slater. and Andrew's Slater. fairly standard Slater. lineup for them. There's a bit of cloud around, but David Miller not in the squad Slater. today. Hard to say what the captains will do here. Cape Town Serpents are in with a strong chance here. Not really sure what to do if we win this toss. Dry and hard. On a fairly young pitch. So, I'm tempted to want to have a bat first. Won't matter though, as Stan loses the toss. And the Cobras themselves going to have a bat. So, St Andrews will be chasing as the home team get the first use of the wicket. Well, as per usual. Jack McPherson to start up for St Andrews. Yep. One's driven out to Yasson there at mid on. Unusual to see him in that position. And through for a single. McPherson in once more. Yep. Edged One and dropped. I don't know who that is there. Looks like it could be Alex Haynes. That ball flew to him at gully. And of course, Dan Armstrong opening from the other end. Yep. That one starts leg side-ish and is just clipped away behind the square. Batsman are back for two. McPherson tidies. They come back for two. Einhans on to four. Little flick through to the keeper, takes the catch, and Armstrong takes a wicket. It's a great line, just had the batsman trying to force it off the back foot. Feathers it through to the keeper, who takes a good catch with the ball still rising. Safe Kleinhans goes for four. Last ball of the over for Armstrong. Short finds the edge, but it flies away to the fine league boundary. Armstrong in again after a successful first over. That first ball's cut, cut hard and in the air. Finds a gap and four runs. One for 19 after four. Hamza keeps the strike with that three, he's on nine. That one's cut away through backward point. Out to the boundary for four. Hams are starting to look comfortable out here. Miles back on strike. He's eight from 15. Just being tied down a wee bit here. That's a... Oh, he's put it down. Unfortunate that. Unfortunate. Haynes with a diving attempt. I thought he was going to catch it. I thought it was going to stick. Armstrong continuing for his fourth. He's three overs, one for 17 at the moment. That's outside off stump. Cut behind point. Ball's going to race away. Don't think Hayes going to catch up to it. No, he won't. Bit aerial, but it's effective. Armstrong in again to Miles. Short and pulled away. Earnshaw's after it. I don't think he's going to catch it, though. It's slowing down a little bit. Oh, just beats him to the fence. Well, warm weather has caused an early bowling change. A into the attack. Bowling over number nine. First ball to Hamza, driven out to the covers. Yep. 
Josh in. This one's punched just short of Koshi. Now running through for a single. Oh, and there's overthrows. Oh, McLennan has not even moved. And it's gone to the boundary. Unfortunate for Hay. Well, changes at both ends. We say it's a warm day here in Cape Town. Franklin looking to preserve the bowlers. And oh my word, that's moved a mile. Haynes in again. That's short and cut. Hasn't got a lot on that, but it's in the gap. And will run out to the boundary for four. Oh, Hay finds the edge this time, but it's found a gap between Gully and Backward Point, and it runs out to the boundary for four. That's a 50 partnership up for these two. Some nice running, nice stroke play as he's into Miles, and this one's up over the top. There is a man back. Will he get to it? Crooks flicks that in off the boundary. Great work from him, and keeps it to two. Nicely ran there. They'll get two. That's a fantastic effort on the boundary. Another change in the bowling. Earnshaw in for his first over. First ball looks like it struck him outside the line. A little appeal though. Shorter this time from Earnshaw. I think he's hit that straight into McLennan. Another dot ball. One for 72, Cape Town. And sure, and again, this one's That's what the crowd cut up to see. and nice through the gap. Lead. At backward point, out to the boundary for four. Final ball, the over. Oh, he's bowled him. Just held that one back a little bit, and Hamza went after it. He missed an Earnshaw hit, and the partnership for the Cobras has been broken. Last ball of the over. Aims to Bowen. Full. Oh, he's knocked a stump over. Haynes went for the Yorker first up. Gets it right and Danny Bowen goes. Ends in again. Shorter this time. And McLennan takes the catch. And that's another wicket for Alex Haynes. Well, that's a big wicket for St. Andrews. Jacob Miles, who is looking set after being dropped twice early. And then this one's flicked high over the league side. Found a gap. One bounce out to the boundary for four. Final delivery of the over. Haynes and it's full edged again. And it's flying out towards the boundary. It's another four. And in the end, an expensive over from Alex Haynes. Haynes and once more. Little feather. Can McLennan get to it? He can. He takes the catch. And it's out. Jonah Shaw goes for six. Another catch to McLennan. Dan Ninja's in. This one's hit high in the air. There's a man back. It's very high in the air. Takes the catch, and that's another wicket for St. Andrews. Earnshaw gets the wicket of Gavin Levy. Caught Crooks out there on the boundary. Cape Cobras, 6 for 95. A bit of a task for the new batsman here. Earnshaw, and again. Tossed up, strikes the batsman on the pad. That's going to be close. Loud appeal. No, says the umpire. Did that hit outside the line? I think Stan's going to challenge this one. Yes, he is. Coming from very wide on the crease, Earnshaw. Oh, impact. Umpire's call. Oh, wow. Could have gone either way there, that call. And sure, and again, for ways across his stumps, gets round the ball. And a fantastic stroke. 
Goes out to the boundary for four. Away on nine. Earnshaw in again. He's across his stumps. He's hit it high in the air. There's a man out there. But won't get to it. Four runs. Patrick, the pace bowler coming into the attack. Patrick Jess into the attack for the first time today. Ano had some success. Let's see if the medium pace of Jess will do the job as the first ball's nudged out Anderson just wide taken. of mid on. Take a single. Jess into Verway now, who's on 13. Verway's across his stumps and hitting that up and over fine leg. No one back there. Jess in bowls, it's a full toss. Driven through the onside, a little misfield there, and it's going to go all the way for four. Final ball, and it's short from Jess. It's hit in the air, straight at square leg. Can he catch the ball? No, Armstrong puts it down. And sure, and again, that one strikes Armstrong on the pad. He touched and go with that hit in line. You can see all the stumps. Slightly outside the line, thinks the, uh, the captain. Oh, and that looks very close. Umpire's call it would have been. Earnshaw's in. This one's muscled. Wide of mid-off. Out to the boundary for four. Final ball of the over. Flighted and he's bowled him. That's a great delivery from James Earnshaw. A lot of flight. Armstrong came forward. Beaten in the air. It's back onto the stumps. Earnshaw into the ways across the stumps, heading up in the air. Find some open space, and it's going to go out to the boundary for four. And it sails to the boundary. Last ball of the over. First into Digby, who's across the stumps, pulling that one. Hasn't got all of it, but it's going to go out to the boundary for four. Put away nicely. Not a great ball to finish for McPherson. Jess in again. That one's shorter and just flicks behind square. Great timing. It races away to the fine league boundary. Another four runs. Jess in finds the edge. McLennan takes the catch. And a well deserved wicket to Patrick Jess. McLennan gets another catch. And the partnership is broken. Digby Pearl goes for 15. McPherson continuing into his seventh over. Finds the edge and it falls safely. Single down to third man for the way. Although there are overthrows, McLennan again has just watched the ball go past him and McPherson is unhappy. Jess into for his sixth over. That's full. Has Verway playing across his stumps. It's it up and over fine leg. One bounce, four. Nunez on strike. He's on nine. Person in. This ball's put up and over point. A fantastic stroke. Out to the boundary for four. Brings Verway on strike. He's on 49. Last ball of the 42nd over. He hits this one up in the air, over to extra cover. It's a misfield by Franklin. And they come back for two, but one would have been enough. That's 50. And that's 50. Keelan Verway, 51 from 69 balls. It's really held this innings together in the second half. Take a look at his spider and a few of those boundaries down to fine leg. He's just been really good at walking across the stumps. And with Armstrong still suffering a little bit in this heat. Got Hay in. First ball hit in the air. And it's a great catch. That's a fantastic catch at point. Was that Alex Haynes? Yes, it was. First ball of his spell. Hay takes a wicket. 
final delivery of the over for Hay. It's in, it's full and clipped. Out through fine leg, out to the boundary for four. Nice shot. Jess into his final over. One for 45 for him. Full ball flicked in the air. No one back for Munsami. It's gone out to the boundary for four. Final ball of the over. Patrick Jess. This one's pulled away. Armstrong's not going to get to it. Well struck by Munsami. Out to the boundary for four. Well, final over of the innings. Cape Town 9 for 197. Hay into bowl. Finds the edge. McLennan takes the catch. And that's the end of the innings. Important scout there. They were batting really well. Well, there you have it. The Cape Cobras bowled out for 197 in the 45th over. And you have to say it's some fantastic work through those middle overs. Haynes and Earnshaw taking wickets and keeping the run rate down. And 198 on a wicket that seems all right for batting at the moment. Should be able to do the St. Andrews, but never know with this side. Well, Nunez to get us underway for the second innings. Ball into McLennan. Eclipses into the leg side. Big dive from Koshi. But they're off the mark. St. Andrews, of course, needing just over four and over. Nunez is in. Koshi flicks this, gets it behind square. Off the mark. Last ball of the over. McLennan forward. It's it straight at cover. There will be overthrows here, though. Going to go out to the boundary for four. Well, first boundary of the innings. St. Andrews, none for 16. Munsami round the wicket now. Koshi, who hits that firmly behind square on the offside. Out to the boundary for four. Last ball of the fourth over. Munsami into McLennan. It's forward and clips that through mid-wicket. And it is flying out towards the mid-wicket boundary. All the way along the carpet. Beautiful stroke. Then it moves on to 17. None for 33. Punches this one off the back foot into the covers. Oh, direct hit and that was out. But it's going to be five. Last delivery. In a tidy over. Clem leans on this one out to square leg. Direct hit and Koshi's in trouble. They're going upstairs. It was a good dive from Koshi. But he's short. Aaron Koshi run out for 15. That's the first wicket for St. Andrews. As James Earnshaw strides out to the crease. And Sami over the wicket to Earnshaw. Short, little top edge. Running away safely down to fine leg. Think about two, but in the end, settle for one, and Earnshaw's off the mark. Munsami in again to Earnshaw, who drives that straight past the bowler, down to a vacant mid-on region. It's going to just beat the fielders into the fence. Boundary for Earnshaw. Munsami. Bowls inside edge and it's flying away to the fine league boundary. Well, here we have the introduction of spin with Digby Paul. Bowling to McLennan. Plays and misses at that first one. Pearl to Earnshaw. A little bit shorter, and Earnshaw hits us firmly down to fine leg, beats the man into the boundary rope for four. Earnshaw just struggling a little bit out here. As Armstrong's in, this one's down leg, runs off Earnshaw's pad. He's coming back for two. Dives, and the umpire's going upstairs. This would be terrible running if it's out. It is out. Earnshaw, what was he doing? There were two runs there all day. Can't make it. He's gone. 
Oh, well, you can only shake your head. Another run out for St. Andrews. Armstrong continues. Brooks works us away behind square. Not a bad way to start your innings. Four runs, out to backward point. Brings McLennan on strike, he's on 46. Levy into him. He clips this one off his legs, down towards fine leg. He'll run away from the backward square leg fielder, out to the boundary for four. And that's 50 for Ross McLennan. And here we have McLennan spider. A lot of singles. A few fours through that leg side. Two balls left in the over. Brooks on 10. McLennan on 51. Oh, he's got a lot of that. He smashed that one up and over fine leg. Into the crowd. Final delivery here. Armstrong in. Lennon's forward. Punches that through the gap. He's placed that well. Looks like it'll reach the boundary. Yes, it will. Races to the boundary. Lovely shot. Avian once more. Brooks hits that hard and wide of mid-off. Will it beat the man to the boundary? Yes, it will. Well played stroke there from James Crooks. Four runs. Levy to McLennan now. Down leg and he's helped it up over square leg. Out to the boundary for four. He was waiting for that. Armstrong in again. Crooks hits that one hard. Beats cover this time. Out to the boundary for four. Good partnership between these two. And they're just coming out of their shell ever so slightly. Armstrong to Crooks. Wide and there's a little edge through. Not a good shot from James Crooks. And just losing concentration it seems. And he won't challenge that. Crooks goes. Caught the way. Old Armstrong for 28. Now Stan Franklin strides out to the crease. Average of 38. Very healthy. Just needs to chip away here. As Armstrong's into him. Cuts this one into the gap. Extra cover. And through for a single. Three for 133. Levy into Franklin. Hitting this one along the ground. Very hard and finally didn't have a chance. Two balls left in the over. Digby into Franklin. Who hits this hard and high and over the fielder's head, all the way for six. Levy to Franklin. Franklin hits this firmly, beats short fine leg. And it'll roll out to the boundary for four. Well, 32 runs to win for St. Andrews. Franklin on 25, McLennan on 79. Oh, Franklin has smashed that into the gap on the leg side. Out to the boundary for four. Three for 175. TV into Franklin. This is down leg. He's hit it high in the air. Don't think it'll beat short fine leg. But he's put it down. And the batsmen are back for two. Oh, well. Cape Town at this stage had to bowl St. Andrews out. Dropping catches like that won't help. Levy's into Franklin. And he smashes that along the ground. Out to square leg. Into the rope for four. And that's a 50 partnership. Franklin. Up to 37. Levy into him. Oh, he gets more of this one. He's hit this well. Hard and high over fine leg. Into the crowd for six. Three for 187. Levy in. Oh, and it's bowled him. Franklin's missed it, and Levy snuck it through. Franklin goes for 43. And that brings Jason Segal to the crease. You'd think his only job here would be to see it through. 11 runs to win. 
And Seagal leans on that first one. Out to backward square for a single. End of the over. And Levy into his seventh over. Bowling to Seagal. Oh, he's got a lot of this. Well, if you're not in form, that's one way to hit yourself into it. No one back there. Safe shot. Six runs. Three to win for St. Andrews. Field comes in. Skull struck on the pad. Three balls left in the over. Levy to Seagal. Full and wide and Seagal hits this out to point. Oh, a direct hit. McLennan was out. Hurl into Seagal. It's full and wide and Seagal hits it up and over cover. Out to the boundary for four. That's the 200 up for St. Andrews and the win. Easy in the end. Well, after winning the toss and batting first, the Cape Cobras bowled out for 197. It was never really going to be enough unless St. Andrews lost wickets early and quickly. And when they didn't, it proved no match at all with St. Andrews winning by six wickets with 15 and a half overs left. Going to take a quick look at the scorecard now. And the Cape Cobras, of course, losing a wicket early, that of Kleinhans, caught behind off the bowling of Armstrong. Could have been in even more trouble. Jacob Miles, who ended with 30, dropped twice by Alex Haynes in the first three or four overs off the bowling of McPherson. As it was, Miles and Hamza had a very solid partnership, 77 runs for that second wicket before Haynes and Earnshaw working in tandem took not two, but three quick wickets, reducing the Cobras to four for 84, and then wickets fell fairly consistently throughout the rest of the innings. Five for 94, six for 95, seven for 121, eight for 148, nine for 182, nice little partnership there for the ninth wicket, and then all out for 197. Top score for the Cobras, Kalen Verwe, 53. He was the last man to fall, caught behind off the bowling of Hay in that final over. Looking at the St. Andrews bowlers, and McPherson was unlucky, very tidy up the top. Nine overs, none for 36. Of course, he came back and finished the innings as well. Armstrong, only four overs today, one for 25 for him. A little bit expensive. He suffered a little bit in the heat which meant he couldn't get through as many overs as he usually would. And by the time he was set to come back in, he uh, didn't really have the energy for it. So instead, that went to Hay to finish off. He bowled two overs up front, also struggled because of the heat, but came back and bowled an excellent spell at the end there. Ended up with two for 22, both those wickets falling in the last three overs. Haynes, fantastic. Nine overs, one maiden, three for 31. 3.44 and over. Not much more you could ask for from your medium paces. James Earnshaw, back in form, we would hope. 9 overs, 1 maiden, 3 for 29. He's had a rough go of it recently, so it's good to see him back amongst the wickets and with a decent economy rate. And Patrick Jess, again, very solid effort from him. Bowling at the death. 9 overs, 1 for 53. Deserved more wickets. 4 wides, not great from the St. Andrews bowlers, but they'll take it. And 197 was the score. So 198 for the St. Andrews batsman to chase down. And they did it fairly comfortably in the end. Solid opening partnership. 39 before Koshi was run out. And then 36 for the second wicket before Earnshaw ran himself out. Crooks and McLennan then put on just over 50. 53 for that third wicket. Picking up the pace a little bit. Crooks 28 off just 18 deliveries. Franklin then took over when Crooks fell. Adding 43 from 25 before he fell late. And Seagal there saw us over the line in the end. Standout batsman, of course, Ross McLennan. Not out. 82 from 81 deliveries. So a great knock from him. Nice to see him in a bit of form. And St. Andrews chase it down with plenty of time and wickets to spare. Looking at the Cape Cobras bowlers, they used five. Nunez was exceedingly tidy at the top of the order there. Five overs, none for 15. Munsami was expensive. Six overs, none for 43. Armstrong then, the third seamer used. He was tidy. Six overs, one for 29. But the two spinners were very expensive. Digby Pearl, 
5.3 overs, none for 40, and Levy, 7 overs, 1 for 69, going at nearly 10 runs and over. And it was always going to be tough to defend this score with this outfield, but Levy's bowling in particular did not make it any easier. So, fantastic match, fantastic win for St. Andrews away from home. Man of the match goes to James Earnshaw. I would have given it to McLennan, he took a few catches there as well. But St. Andrews win by six wickets. Let's take a look at the other matches this round in our league. Well, in other week seven action, saw Barbados heading over to the UK to take on Somerset. Barbados batting first, seven for 229. Lenico Boucher, the best of the batsmen, with 87. Dominic Drakes, 65 from 70. Best of the Somerset bowlers, Craig Overton, 4 for 26. In reply, Somerset chased it down, 7 wickets down, with 4.5 overs to spare. So, 7 for 230 from 40.3. Tom Banton, 78 from 71. Tom Abel, 71 not out. The pick of the Somerset batsman. Warrikin and Harding each taking two wickets for Barbados, two for 26 and two for 44 respectively, but Somerset win by three wickets, man of the match, Craig Overton. Round seven also saw Sussex playing host to the Queensland Bulls. The Bulls batting first, four for 269, another solid outing for them. Max Bryant, 86, Manus Labashain continuing his assault on the league, 72 not out, and Joe Burns, 69 from 55 balls. The best of the Bulls batsmen. George Garton and Will Beer each taking two wickets, two for 39 and two for 56 for Sussex. And in reply, Sussex bowled out, bowled out in the 40th over for 173. So a comfortable victory by 96 runs for the Bulls. Best of the Sussex batsmen, Reggie Baird, 42 from 50 balls. Three wickets each to Mitch Swepson and Mark Steckerty, three for 14 for Swepson, three for 44 for Steckerty. Man of the match, Mitch Swepson. And in the final game of the round, we saw Bengal traveling to Wellington, take on the Firebirds. Wellington batting first, bowled out the 212. Malcolm Nofal, the best of the batsmen, 56 from 69 for him. Mukesh Kumar taking a five for five for 48, with no other bowler getting more than one wicket. 212, the total set by Wellington, and in reply, Bengal bowled out as well. So plenty of wickets in this game. The 203, so falling an agonizing nine runs short. Best of the Bengal batsman, Shravitz Gosfami, 66 from 66 balls. Best of the Firebirds bowlers, Hamish Beckett, 4 for 28. Jimmy Nisham amongst the wickets as well, 3 for 31. Though the match goes to Mukesh Kumar for his 5 for, but Wellington win by nine runs. So let's take a look at what this has done to the table. So with seven games down, we have an outright leader in the Queensland Bulls. Six wins from those seven matches for 60 points with one bonus point. In second place, outright second place now, St. Andrews, having dropped just those two games. We also have an outright third, Barbados there, moving into outright third with four wins from their seven matches. So plenty of bonus points. Then we have Wellington, the Cape Cobras, Somerset, and Sussex, all separated by bonus points and or net run rate with three wins from four games. So a bit of a log jam there. Then right down the bottom, we've got Bengal with that one win coming in the last round. So a bit of distance out there at the top. One, two, and three all clear, but a bit of a log jam through the middle. And with only three losses separating first and seventh, Lots could happen. Lots could happen here, but St. Andrews need to focus on capturing the Bulls and making up for that loss over in Queensland. Anyway, that's been us for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a while since we've done a few league games, so it's good to get back into it. So yeah, I've been Jim the Editor. Thank you very much for watching.